Hello folks, Nemo Nemo here, and welcome to Godhood, a game where you design a god and guide your religion through, uh, basically through the world, and try to basically convert everyone to your religion, while implementing tenets and traditions and basically trying to build your religion from scratch, and usurping other gods and so forth. It's made by Abbey Games, who originally, who made, like, Rius, which is a really fun game as well, and they also made Renowned Explorers. Which is also a very good game. Two also very good games, which I also quite recommend. Um, and there's a lot of space for customization in this game of of um, of the god, of course, of the religion, of course, and of the individual disciples. Um, I'm gonna grab disciple names from my Patreon list and from my Twitch subscriber list. Uh, so we're gonna go through those. Uh, if you want to join the list, I'm gonna, I'm rolling randomly at the moment. So between episodes, I'll always do a check and see who I need to grab. Um, that's where to find it. Anyway, let's begin. I've done one before where I took a, uh, a religion, the religion, <laughs> all the way to, to, to truth. Truth is like the highest you can get. I think you get that with 30,000 supporters. Our religion was the, um, was the fellowship, uh, and the god was the imparalleled. And we had, we were a peaceful religion. We had reincarnation. We believed in turning the other cheek. We believed in revelations. We believed in joyful sermons, heaven, morning prayer, the Sabbath. We had a monk order, we had symbolic dedication, we had peaceful protests. We were a sun- we, we, we usurped the sun god and became the sun god. We had a code of honor which you got from making a, um, a, war, a war god. You got meditation, you got choral music and got some ritual cleaning as well. And this was our final, like our final party I think where Ivan, Kamana, and Uen, Ambassador, Ambassador, Songsmith, oh, no, did not delete that. There are, there are several classes depending on what religion, on your religions to for your disciples to be. Anyway, let's start. What challenge do you seek? I played medium last time, which gives you additional happiness at every island, gives you a bit more resources and faith. Your disciples live longer, so you have more time to find replacements, and your disciples best develop a little faster. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna switch it up to hard this time, which pretty much means hard is kind of you have no. What is free mode? Let's not do free mode. I'll do the intro for your benefit. Uh, where basically hard is you have no bonuses or no no um, negatives. Easy is ridiculously easy. Easy would be like, I haven't played easy, but but just looking from what I know from playing medium, easy is ridiculously easy. Impossible is just hard with stronger enemies. So this is just mechanically harder, whereas this is just basically you get no little cheats and basically no disciple age bonuses means we can recycle names a lot quicker. Anyway, let's create our god. Because I am a benevolent deity, the god of course is going to be me. Let's, we can do the, the randomization. This, the customization is quite huge. I'm just going to hit randomize a couple of times. See what happens. Uh, a what is that? What is that head? I'm not quite sure. It looks like a kind of a sheep's head with no horns. An Egyptian hat. Uh, dragonfly wings. Carrying a bow, okay, that is a animal wings, kind of, maybe kind of a cat face, looks side on perhaps? A pipe? You have no face, but big beastly arms. I like that, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the um, the headgear in that, so we can change, we can change the headgear in that. We have, a, we have a jellyfish for a head. Um... Give ourselves, a, give ourselves a. I like the, the horns. Go for the horns there. Wings. We can give ourselves a, ooh, a, nice, a nice big tail. Nice big tail. Arms are there. Hat. Or eyes. Oh, hang on. You can get. There you go. There's our eyes there. Good. Uh, either. Uh, and when am I awake? Am I awake at dawn, dusk, or at night? I am a nocturnal deity. Uh, our color will be blue, because I do like blue. Right, how should you just me? You just me as me, of course. We are Nemo the Almighty. That's capital small T there. Our religion, of course, for people who are Twitch streams, our religion, of course, is uh, oppressionalism. And my supporters are the four professionals. 
The fro professionals believe that Nidal the Almighty is the deity that brings the tr us the truth, the truth that carries the name fro professionalism. Let it be known. Let it be known. For as long as there are, for as long as there have been people to believe, there have been gods to vie for their attention. Nemo the Almighty is one such is one such gods, destined to claim a peace place in humanity's hearts and minds. A single soul would be chosen by Nemo the Almighty, destined to become the first prophet of professionalism. From nothing, Nemo the Almighty appeared for Chim, which will be renamed. Chim renounced their faith in the old gold Quetzalcoatl and placed it in Nemo the Almighty instead. First, Nemo the Almighty taught Chim about what is right. In my name, you will spread, and you get to pick your basic commandments. War, peace, pleasure, purity, greed, generosity, or madness. Uh, I did peace last time, which is a morale style. You can do like you can do more. You can convert via morale. You can convert via um, physical attacks. Basically, you can you can either beat your opponents into submission or convert them via arguments, etc. Uh, so I did peace last time. You can go war, but fro professionalism I think requires a bit more of a of a um, mix there. Purity is a mixed, very defensive style. You can have greed, which is mostly physical, with eye for crits. It's also profit driven and results oriented. Generosity. Love thy neighbor and thyself, and help them in times of hardship. But no, of course we are going to be mad. The maddening insights provided by Nemo the Almighty are the only truth. Advanced players on a hard setting. This may not go as well as my or my previous playthrough. Are you sure you want menace to be over to? Yes, I also need to turn down that sound. Bloody hell. I'm going to get a moment. I'll quickly just tone down that sound. Madness. The elders who worship the ancestors thought this idea to be dangerous. This is madness. Literally, yes. They could not see how they were wrong in opposing Nemo the Almighty. A sacrament was called to determine who is right. Prepare for the sacrament. Sacraments are the fights of the game. So here's Chim, our... Our disciple. So basically you fight... Oh god, this, this is quite loud. Yeah, sorry this is loud. Either beating people to death or converting them. The first to convert half the audience wins. You lost the segment against the elders. Chim, a level two. The elders were resolute in their judgment. Chim and a few followers were banished from the old city. Before leaving, Chim prophesied that one day Nemo the Almighty will bring the liberation of madness to the old city. One day we will return. Chim continued to travel for days with the exile. The people were growing tired and hopeless. Finally, on a fertile and lush terrace, Nemo the Almighty spoke again. This shall be the Nemo the Almighty's holy site. And a new religion is founded. Welcome to the realm of godhood, young deity. Your goal is to ascend to the rightful throne and leave behind a religion that will send the test of time. You will face many religions that adore false gods. Convert them by word or by sword and grow your religion. When you have bested enough religions, you will be able to ascend into eternity. I will ascend, and fro professionalism will be paramount. In order to send you will, raise a strong group of disciples that represent your religion, so they may convert heathens in the sacrament. With more followers, you can create a lasting religion and best other religions. There are different ways to achieve these goals, depending on the tenets you choose to be part of your religion. There are many moving parts in God that don't take time to understand. Basically, yes. I'm going to skip the tutorialized bits of it, but let's do a sign of preachal to the prophet. Uh, as quickly, before that happens, I'm going to quickly just... Load it down a smidge. Are you Marajo? Okay. But basically, right? This this is our this is our um I'm a night god, okay, so that's why it's this night time. We have here our village. Um basically you get to um you don't get to control things directly, but you get to basically tell them how to improve. Chim is our prime disciple. Chim, hello. Chim is in fact not Chim. Chim is in fact... Uh, who's doing this? Chim is now Starjackal. Starjackal is our first... Um, prophet. They are of prime age. They are a cultist, which is a dark task type. You have like uh, element wheels here. So dark is effective against nature. Nature is effective against divine. Divine is effective against Ancestral, Ancestral is effective against life, and life is effective against dark. 
they are cultist class, which is just dark to weird abilities. Also unchains your allies, increasing their strength and boiling their blood with madness. Passive is chance to follow up another ally's dark ability. Totem is you have extra stat increases. There's a lot to talk about here, but I'm going to quickly skip over. Basically, you get to choose a ritual. All your disciples are working in rituals all the time. And rituals are the most important way to improve your disciples. Every turn, your disciple will make a bigger progress to the ritual. Once they're finished, they will develop stats. What are these stats? Might, physical offense. Health, physical defense. Cunning is initiative and physical crit and evasion. Charisma is a morale offense. Devotion is morale defense. And knowledge is smart targeting and morale crit and evasion. Smart targeting means you'll attack... Other than attacking the person directly opposite you, you'll attack... More likely to attack... Uh, people who, whose your attacks will be most effective against. Uh, important stats are different for every class. You can hover over a stat for more information. Stats also have ranks, ranging from F to S. When you raise a stat, that will rank up. This will give the discipline a huge power boost. For example, raising health from 9 to 10 will raise it from E to D. This will double your physical armor bonus. However, with power comes corruption. Higher ranks will lower faith. Put to make use of ranks sufficiently to grow your disciples. Basically, you can see here by their faith. Um... Enthusiasm, 50. Deep Bond, because uh, Jar Jekyll is my prophet, has a, like a plus 45. Uh, same thing with New Religion, founded professionalism, and is glad that madness is a virtue. Uh, however, God or no God, power corrupts. The more powerful you are, the higher that God or no God power corrupts debuff is. And if your faith reaches zero, your disciples might leave. Also, Low faith lowers ritual effectiveness and the passive ability chances during sacrament. Anyway, that's... You are... Hang on, let's have a look at this. You are, of course, a cultist. A cultist... Look at your abilities, cultist. You... You scale with knowledge and might. See, like, corruption, potent morale ability, total power 12. Because disciple base 4, knowledge boson 4, might bonus 4. Um, yeah, might bonus. Okay, you're steady with might and knowledge, it looks like. Might bonus there, might and knowledge there, knowledge bonus there. Okay, so you're looking for might and knowledge. Okay, a cult. Miracles improve ritual development for that disciple. Higher stats will grow less efficiently when developing. So you can either increase our knowledge there, our scream increases our charisma, a punish ritual increases our might, or stock increases, increases cunning. Let's work on our punish. Excellent, now you need this time to pass. To pass a turn, you need to bless one of the disciples that is open for a blessing. One or two random disciples will have hearts open per turn. Blessings have a minor effect, like boosting ritual progress of it. Bless a disciple with the button to next to the ritual and make the time pass. So, your end turn button is essentially this one. Every turn, some of your disciples will be open for a blessing, and giving them a blessing will pass the turn. So, we can give you a ritual, which is basically going to give an added bonus to your ritual progression, or we can add dream points. Dream points give you a currency to spend every fight to buff your troops first. Let's work on our ritual, though. Good. So that was my 11% plus a basic themselves. Now, spreading for oppressionalism. Now you can raise your disciples. The next step is winning sacraments and gathering other followers. To convert others, you'll send out disciples to do missions. Every mission has one or more sacraments. These are the moments at which the people of the godhood are converted. How do I go on a mission? You will automatically ask by the disciples to pick a destined mission. At the start, you won't have much choice, but as you progress, your options increase. Once you've picked a mission, you have time to prepare for the coming challenges in your holy city. Words of your religion spread quickly. Tizo and Yang Tei have heard of your great name. They too want to spread the word of professionalism. I will inspire the rituals and bless their actions. Right. Let's have a look here. Tizo, hi. You have a totem of charisma. So you want... So you're... You're... Basically, your talented stats improve quicker, so you want to grow your charisma, uh, if at all possible. And because you're level 1, you actually, one of your activists' abilities, and if you're in combat, you basically pick a random ability from this to use. Um, too inexperienced and too nervous to act because you're currently level 1. So we're going to focus on you. Because you're good at charisma, let's, let's uh, double down on that. Uh, choose the destiny mission first, okay. So, every... Mish every fight, you basically pick a fight, have three turns to prepare, and have the fight, and then pick a new fight, have three turns to prepare, and then that fight. Um, this time left is missions left, not turn days left. There's, there's two... There's three days per mission. So, pick a mission, three days prepare, do the mission, then that number goes down by one. Anyway, so, Southern Jungle. Our first 
uh, mission will be to convert the pagans. There are three pagans of level of power levels five, four, and five. If I win, I get a disciple slot and three sacrament tribute chests. There's three godless pilgrims. Advanced info, we can see what they are. You have here loads of condemning, which is basic morale abilities, loads of attacks, which is a basic physical ability, a mixture of condemn and attack, and they're all level ones. They're also kind of a chance of just not doing anything. The first day has passed because that was my first blessing. Now let's give them all a ritual. Tizo, do I have a charisma ritual? I do. Screamed. Screaming into the night for some time. And Tay, what is your ability? Your totem is might, so you're going to also focus on punish. Right, anyway, let's give some names here, shall we? Tizo, you are now Letherington. And Tay is going to be... Morthen. Good. Let's give you your punish. We shall show you. Punish. There you go. And we can inspire somebody. We will bless you again with more ritual progression. We have here. Lethington, Morthen, and Sarjekal are my disciples, with Sarjekal being my uh, prophet. Sarjekal did not come empty handed to the Holy Land. With him, he brought a magnificent relic that holds tr the true power of Nemo the Almighty. What would this relic be? I can either have a sacred infant, add 50% might to Disciple's crit chances, which is pretty decent, or secret pyramid. Global bonus. Knowledge abilities make the enemies mad for two rounds, increasing their chance to accept badly and one clouded thought. Ooh, I like pushing the madness angle. You also get also gives you your basic classes. We can get Beast Walker and Chieftain on one end, or Weaver and Druid on the other hand. This is quite this is quite a defensive class. Um, while I like this, while I like that ability, oh, it's a good question now. Straight up, like basic bonuses to crit chance, which is fine because half might, might by the end of the game becomes like over a hundred, so that's a fifty percent crit chance bonus. Which is insanely high, by the way. That's ridiculously high for crit chance, especially because I don't think we have a lot of cunning. Right, in which case... Um, we also have a lot of might usage. I think Beast Walker and Chieftain use might more, but they don't use knowledge. I think Beast Walker I think, uses cunning. You lose... That uses... These both use knowledge, though. I know for a fact these both use knowledge. You know what? I want to see how madness, how quick madness goes. So we'll go secret pyramid. We also have cultists, of course. We've got three classes. We've got cultist and the other two classes. So I must remember, we've got cultist as well. Okay, so we haven't, we don't get to pick our classes yet. That'll probably be after the next fight. But you see, cultist there. Acolyte, no specializations yet. I think once they level up... Oh, you get to pick a class once you level up, of course. So after this fight, let them turn to level up and we'll get to pick our classes. Let us immediately, therefore, um, bless you. Prepare for the mission. Uh, we can learn about elements. We can learn about morale and physical. I've explained elements already. There are element wheel and morale and physical are basically the two different damage types. Spread my name. Okay. You are young. Young disciples take extra XP from sacraments. Um, and prime disciples do extra damage from abilities. So basically, the more they fight while they're young, the quicker they level. And... Uh, oh, damn. Oh, wow. Sean Connery just passed away. I've, I've, I've never dated when I'm recording this, but... Rip Sean Connery. Um, yeah, so... If you're, when you're of age, you do more damage. When you're growing up, you are uh, you get extra XP. Anyway, let's go. You have again mixture of attacks and condemns, and you have of course uh, three babbles and two corruptions. Fighting is automatic. I have no control here. I have no control. This will go automatically. So, Corruption. Yeah. Nemo the Almighty will do miracles. I can hit space to pause here. Now, Corruption. Um, 
potent morale ability. And because we have knowledge abilities, make enemies mad for two rounds, increasing their chance to intercept badly in one clouded thought. So we've added here mad. We'll intercept more often, even if it does more damage. Sometimes you look, if if one of your team is better at better at taking a specific damage type than others, they will sometimes intercept the damage and take the hit instead. This makes it less makes it more likely intercept will happen, but it makes it less relevant what the damage type would be. So someone could intercept an attack that they're weak against, for example. And we also added a clouded thought, which basically is like a stun. It does, there's very little damage there, and we replace one of their abilities from that. There are four turns, so out of the five cards here, you will pick four of them. Unless you have a way of getting an extra turn. Anyway, let's carry on. Attack! Ah. Ooh, we hit hard. Yeah, there's, there's an interception, see? Condemn. Defy is basically evasion, but for morale attacks. The end of the turn, we have 19 people, they have one. We have 29, all we need to do is convert seven left. 35. And can we beat you one more? Nothing turn, get a good swig in, condemn. There we go. When you've hit the middle, you automatically grab the rest of them. So we're gonna get 36 was half, so 69, obviously. Lutington levels up, unlock a class. Your disciple has enough XP to less a class. When choosing a disciple's class, take into account the whole roster. Every class has its own element, abilities, and passive that make it unique. If you want your disciples to work well together, take your time to figure out more. Swap classes and get familiar with their strengths and weaknesses. When selecting a class for your disciple, will make their talent into account. Not all disciples have equal talents. Someone with great charisma might make a better zealot than a beast walker. Balance team and individual talents create a legendary roster. Let's pick a class. We have at the moment Weaver, Druid, and Cultist. Uh, you are charisma talented. You are eternally crap at pretty much everything at the moment. Uh, you might be the best weaver at the moment, but you're not good at anything else. Charisma is not really something we can we have at the moment. However, we can unlock more classes. We have Druid. Ugh. Why do we have Druid? I, I was thinking that was a weird one for us to have. Um, these are the ones we can get for us here. Uh, we have Cultist because we're mad. Because we're a madness god, we get Cultist. I'm assuming... That's for peace gods. I'm assuming execution is for war gods. Aesthetic is for purity gods. Charlatan is for... Um, Lust Priest is for, for pleasure gods. Cook must be for greed gods. And Charlatan must be for um, generosity gods, I think. Well, we must be greed and aesthetic must be... Cook must be generosity. Who knows? You generously show the bounty, a generosity there. Charlatan is greed. Anyway. I can lock my first class for free. Do we have anyone who makes use, good use of charisma? The chieftain makes good use of charisma. So does the songsmith, but the chieftain makes good use of charisma. So... You use knowledge, you use knowledge, you use knowledge. We've got a lot of knowledge abilities here. Rage Prophet doesn't really work for us. Again, more, more of a war god as this smite sword. Zealot. Uh, we're gonna go for let's pick chieftain because charisma works well for us chieftain is a powerful leader they use rally abilities to motivate and buff your disciples but can also strike with their totem they attack after a rally ability to set the example also gives us our first ancestral class because we have dark uh, dark life nature ancestral dark we haven't got any um divine classes that's smite sword and zealot Guardian and Songsmith are life. Druid and Beast Walker are nature. Rage Prophet and Chieftain are ancestral. Smite Sword and Zealot are uh, divine. Harbinger and Weaver are dark. And then, of course, uh, dark there. I don't even know what these classes are. Uh, nature, nature, life, divine, dark, ancestral. These are less balanced. Anyway, I'm gonna go for Chieftain. The first class unlock is free. I think you're gonna be better as a Chieftain. Average, but still better than not. Confirm class. Lethington, the Gust, is now our is now, is now a Chieftain class. In the Manage City menu, you can spend materials and offerings to upgrade your holy city. 
buildings and upgrades let you do more power from rituals, god actions let you deal with problems, and more ways to get resources. What you choose to spend your resources on is important to pick wisely. Can I unlock classes? Yes, I've done that as well. But Miracle Charge. Whenever you level up, you get to charge a miracle, which means you spend one turn doing nothing. Akula. You fall to 69. Nice. Three tribute tests, giving us 60 offerings and 60 materials. We get one uh, tenant point, and we have one disciple slot open up. We can get four disciples. Right. So, first of all, choose the destined mission. We have this one, which is a harder mission. We can go to the next one there. Pagan Druid. Max martyrdom increased by one. Over there first. We have eight missions to go to that one, so we have time to build this up. Right. Let us first of all... A, you can miracle you. You're about to let this disciple perform a miracle. When you do this, you set a stat for the miracle. In the future, the stat will raise faster for this disciple. The disciple will be unavailable for one mission. Once the miracle is performed, the disciple will level up, it will gain a new ability, and become generally stronger, and sometimes learn a passive too. Besides rituals, miracles are the second key to make disciples grow stronger. I want you to have your might grow faster, please. Uh, you've also got an ability point, but we'll wait to see what you ability you get from performing a miracle. You will also get a new person. You have either Yvonne or Mary. Uh, the stone, which has a health boost, or Mary, which has a charisma boost. You are weak at everything. You can be a you can be an okay weaver, I guess. You can be an okay weaver, I guess, Mary. For Mary, we'll start working on weaving. Mary is, in fact, um, Rook. Uh, and you can start working on... Uh, start working on your charisma, because that's what you're good at. Um, construct buildings. You can start constructing buildings. We have uh, Holy Site Center, which has already been built. A Night Shrine gives us more dream points. Gardens give us more... Blessings of Recovery. I want to save up for Materials Gatherer and Offering Stockpile because that, increase, that increases our our gain of materials and offerings. We're gonna, I'm going to save up a little bit for some spending things. Uh, also, we're going to go ahead and bless Star Jackal with more Ritual Progress, please. Uh, and then we're going to give you again more Ritual Progress. There you go. Rank up to D. Uh, so yeah, what is it? You want knowledge might, knowledge might, might. Get, you can get, get. Uh, you got your might to D already. Just get your knowledge to D as well. And we're gonna work more thing up a bit. Bless your ritual. Right. Time for the second fight. Prepare for the mission. Now, dark is strong its nature. With Star Jackal there. And then Rook and Morthen can go either side. This will level up Morthen as well, I think. Uh, a lot of morale attacks here. Chant abilities are there, which are morale attacks, and then Wisdom. Lesser morale ability with, that scales with Devotion. Also raises morale, armor, and intercept for two rounds. This does damage, but also increases the uh, chance that they'll intercept morale attacks. The uh, Druid is a very good defensive class for that purpose. Yeah, let's go ahead and go good. Our line of strength is good. It's not blessed, it's just good at the moment. Hopefully it'll work out for us. Right, who goes first? Corruption. Beautiful. Super effective and also um, replaces one of their attacks. Replaced their... Oh, replaced their wisdom with madness. Nice. Good. They're... Their morale armor booster has gone away. Hey. We defied that one. We defied them back. We can speed up planet combat a little bit here. Battle. Super effective. Nervous, doesn't get too much of there. Ooh, so close. Corruption. That'll be it. We get 56. Morton levels up. Your average cultist, average chieftain. We haven't got a second cultist yet, have we? No, we do not have a second cultist yet. So, 
your might is good, so you want to get both of these up and running. So, get a second cultist up. Oops, sorry, second cultist? Yeah, second cultist. What's our second cultist? Six two tribute chests. Max martyrdom. Martyrdom basically is you take a penalty to your health uh, to get more rewards. It's basically a it's a modifier. You just take you start with the disadvantage to gain more rewards. Lethington told an amazing story of Evil the Almighty, exploits to some professionals. The story was so well told that it came alive in the nearby fire. In awe, the listeners learned about Evil the Almighty, while Lethington was too enraptured to notice the miracle. All stories about me are true. Miracle performed. So the charisma devotion has increased. Uh, you've gained the mighty rally ability. An AoE morale ability increases your disciples' might and charisma by 10%. Targets all opponents at once, often has reduced hit chance. Blessed be Lethrington. We also level you up now, can't we? You can say hi. You've got an ability point. Let's spend that ability point somewhere. You have higher charisma than you do might, so we'll focus on giving you another... I can either spend a point getting a level 1 ability to level 2, or I can replace a basic one with, an, with one here. But Intimidate has a charisma bonus. Mighty Rally is just charisma bonus. And Totem Slam has more might than charisma bonus. I can give you a Intimidate. You have a reason type style, so every level of you're more likely to learn a reason type ability, which we haven't got. This is a fear type ability, this is a grace type ability, this is a overpower type ability, so you are equally likely to start everything on a level up. I'm going to give you um, more mighty rally, I think. Give it, take a second mighty rally. Also, notice that you're no longer uh, nervous. Uh, do that. Choose the destiny mission as well. Carry on. You have a you're a Rage Prophet, a Godless Rage Prophet, has several Brawls and a couple of Blind Rages. Targets a random opponent, less chance to hit, but with way more damage. Um, world Strikes or AoEs. It's a very physical attack next time. Morthen levels up. Miracle time. Morthen, what is your... What is your... You are... Vitamin Might, so... I need to grow might stronger is also beneficial. Uh, right, again, we'll wait for your ability to level up. We can also spend our offerings on on basically helping the uh, rituals progress faster. Anyway, let's do our first tenant and then we'll call it there. Every every time you get more development points, you can spend on tenants. Every few tenants, you unlock tradition. You're about to get your first tenant. Tenants are things your followers believe in. Tenants all have effects on your culture. Tenants also unlock traditions, I just said that. If you adopted enough tenants, you can pick one of the unlocked traditions. Traditions are big game changers that often grant new powers. They are a vital part of your strategy. I will pick my tenant now. Our first tradition, of course, Madness. But we are going to go ahead and pick our new tenant. We can pick an adoration tenant, a social tenant, or a philosophy tenant. We can believe in an evil deity or a sea deity. And every that means that every every um every this philosophy increases our passive offering and materials gain. By 25. A social deity gives us this additional pressure. We can make ourselves a secret society, or we have some stern sermons. Or adoration, which increases our passive faith. Which means we adore llamas, we offer blood, we pray at mealtimes, we mutilate heretics, and we worship cats. Um, I am a sea captain, so I'm going to go sea deity at first, which is also going to give us a huge early bonus to our resources, which I'm going to need in the long run, so I'm going to pick sea deity. Nemo the Almighty resides in the deeps. So, cool. Rook professes the merits of the sea deity to the professionals, which increases our passive gain, so every mission will passively gain this much. Um, and we will... Oh, come on, let's do one more then. Let's do one more fight here. Let us... Um, let's, also do, let's also do dreaming for a bit. Let's teach dreaming before we end the episode. Um, also, this is their um, fervor. Every time they get sent out on a mission, they re they lose one fervor. Every time they stay home, they recover some fervor. So we will bless you with dreams. Gives us some dream points there. At the same time, we will also bless Rook's ritual. And we will also give you, Lethington, a blessed ritual as well. 
spreading out the love a little bit. Yeah. Mission time. Ooh, yeah, so we have dream points to spend. So someone is going to dream. Let us pre-plan our ritual, a sacrament. Uh, the dark is neutral against us, so I'm going to put Starjackal there. We'll put Lethington there, and we'll put Rook there. It's okay, it's not great. It could be better. Um, we're going to save the plan. <laughs> Now, if, you br if we um, dream, Rook could probably do with the biggest boost here. You're about to spend your dream points on influencing a disciple in his or her dreams. Excuse me? Is that right? Fills a disciple with determination. Dreams give a strong boost for one mission. Dreams are in great to overcome challenges that would otherwise be impossible. You can spend dream points off the multiple disciples. So I've got one dream point. I can give them additional defense, additional physical armor, or death. You cannot receive broken faith status. If you get knocked out of a... Of a Sacrament, you lose your turn, and you lose a percentage of your converts, which is Broken's Faith. That means he means if you're expecting to die, pick the death dream so that you can't lose converts when your person dies. I'm going to pick... very physical here, so I'm going to pick physical armor for you. Anyway, let's do the mission, and we'll call it there. How's this going to go? Attack. Yeah. You're the faster one. Babble. Yeah. Blind rage. Ooh, that hurt. No. That hurt quite a bit, actually. Mighty rally. Yeah. AoE also increases our charisma and our might for a while. Good. Wild strike. This is their AoE. Babble. Yeah. Again, Please don't wild strike the same person. Huh. Broken. Uh, That's gonna make us harder. We lost. We lost that much there. We, we, we were at 60. We were down to move there now. Also means we don't get a turn. Really. That's painful. In fact, if you attack there, we're gonna be in trouble. No corruption, really? Come on. We, we, we win, thankfully, but Left Newton was broken. If you're broken, you lose a faith bond. Uh, you are an average chieftain. Do you have a weaver yet? We don't have a weaver yet. You are good at charisma, so we're going to take a weaver. We haven't got one. Besides, knowledge stacks are passive, so... Rook the weaver. Now, before I end the episode, let's explain faith bonds. I'm an HP up, nice, and receive a relic choice, good. Nice. We have Rook's Sunleaf, gives you 10 evasion. Lethington's Unbroken Bone gives physical armor and more likely to intercept physical. And Starjackal's Jaguar Tooth, plus 25 damage from all types of crits. Would have been very helpful if I had the other uh, relic, because that would mean super crits, but I'm going to go for a increased physical armor. Well done, you make it through the basics. Tutorial's over. Remember, raise a strong group of disciples to convert heathens to create a lasting religion. A strong synergy, efficient rituals, and fitting traditions. Don't expect to understand anything immediately. Okay. Our ritual, our relic is here. A new relic, Lethington's unbroken bone. Nemo prayed to Nemo the Almighty, and they finally answered. Nemo the Almighty acknowledged Morton's devotion and blessed him and his family. Rejoice, for I look for you after you. Miracle blessing there. You get the. Aberrant Growth Ability. Physical ability that lowers cunning. With a mic bonus. Less it be more than... Uh, okay, so, just before I stop here. Being broken, A means they have a massive penalty. Uh, they have a faith penalty, so they're now currently purely uh, uh, neutral. And um, they, lose, they lost a faith bond. You cannot recover faith bonds, and once you lose three, um, the person just leaves and you lose happiness. Right, so, uh, Morthen, you love, you got an ability. It can give you aberrant growth, or is cunning. Corruption, which does damage, and words of madness. The prince makes your opponent convert doubt back to neutral. Opponent crowd doubt, followers equal to 50%. So they lose followers equal to 50% of the damage dealt with words of madness. You are good with. Hang on, Morton, your benefits are what? You've got a. You've got a might. So. Let's go for something that actually scales off your might well. Pick 
a second aberrant growth. You're, you're scaling off might more than anything else at the moment, so keep your second aberrant growth up there. Brook, uh, you have to you have to level up, haven't you? Ah, oh, yes, we got to pick a mission first. Uh, six turns left there. How we have here? 19, 18, 16. Okay, we're still a bit low for that, so keep pushing towards this way. Although we're currently quite low here as well. Um, you might not win this mission, but anyway, now I've got the time. I'm going to build a materials gatherer. Material gatherer. Um, this is the basic we have for, for for building here. I'm going to build a materials gatherer out of the way, kind of. There's no, there's no, there's no adjacency bonus. This is just aesthetic, I think. Which means we have gained an extra passive, and we can spend the materials here in future. Increase passive material gain, and to increase materials from chests. And also, who is going to have our relic? Uh, Lethington, you can take our, uh, you can take our relic. It is. Who's actually who's who's relic is it? Not that it makes a difference. It makes no difference whatsoever. But it is Lethington's and Broken Bones, so I guess thematically it should start with you. Uh, and Rook, you are a cultist, aren't you? Because you're a weaver, so you kind of want to go down the... You are a charisma weaver. So you want things scold. Um, and mind stare. You want charisma, scold and mind stare. Uh, in which case, we'll give you a charisma miracle. And we will carry on next time, folks. Spread Fropressionalism to the masses. Here we have currently 230 Fropressionals. For an evil the Almighty. We have a current base 10 happiness. And we're walking this. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time, folks. See you then. Bye bye. And keep believing in Fropressionalism.